y'all. We're back with another episode of Community Voices. You've got Michael here, creative director for JD Sports and Finish Line. Uh, we've got some very special guests today. We've got uh, NBA's Garrett Temple and uh, his lovely wife, Kyra McCullough Temple. Um, this is going to be a fun one, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for this one. I can see the passion already, um, you know, in your eyes to talk about this. I'm going to, I'm going to just kind of cue it up because uh, I'm going to learn a lot from this. And, and, you know, I hope our, uh, our family out there and, and, and the young kids can, can learn a lot from this. So uh, science exploration for kids. Talk to us about the mission, uh, where it started. Sure. So it started out of just like pure experience and passion, being a, a young girl who loves science. Um, and I've also learned that I learned differently. So I started science exploration for kids from passion. And uh, we used to do one day STEM camp experiences where kids could uh, have a chance to put their like immerse, immerse themselves into all different aspects of STEAM. So science, technology, engineering, arts and math. So we offered everything from chemistry to engineering to coding. And that's where we're at right now. I'm segueing the program to have a coding two week uh, coding camp. And we're gonna have our first camp in Baton Rouge. So I'm just doing all the planning and the boot work for that. So um, I'm looking forward to having that launch soon. Oh, that's awesome. So w w when did this start? Like, I mean, the ideation of it, was it when you were a kid and, and you wanted some experiences like this? It started in college. So mm -hmm. I was actually, I went to South Carolina State University and I was queen of my university. I was literally Miss South Carolina State. And uh, a part of my like annual initiative, I decided to do these science experiments in uh, the local school that was on campus. And um, I learned when I was tutoring students in school that there were uh, either two ways that students learn. Either you had a reading comprehension that needed to be improved or you had a level of mathematics that you needed to improve as well. So. The idea of me bringing my one day science experiment camps to the school came from the idea of showing kids that you can learn science from different aspects, not just reading a textbook. Like you use like the ubiquity of everything around you to learn how science operates. And um, the first experiment that I started out with was called a color explosion. And you would have a plate of milk and different colors of food coloring. And you take a Q-tip with soap, dip it in the middle of the plate, and then the colors would just spread out and make this beautiful maze. And the kids were amazed by it. So, and they, and they still, they still get amazed by it. Um, but amazed by yeah, so and that's, that's where it all stemmed from, just showing that you can learn science all different ways and you don't have to feel as if you're inadequate if you aren't picking it up necessarily as quickly in the classroom. So before we get into these classes, what are some things that like kids can do at home to like start to immerse themselves into like, oh, this is this is what I want to do? I mean, there are so many options out here. The The internet is so accessible. And I think, you know, because of the pandemic, students were like uh, online learning was was became more accessible as well so I can't pinpoint a few things like right now off the top of my head but YouTube has a lot of options and, and uh, you can go in there and find what home materials you can use to make a science experiment such as a uh, you know a volcano using baking soda and vinegar you know the old school one the one I just mentioned with the milk and the soap and the food coloring uh, you learn about fat bonds and how soap goes in and breaks up bipolar bonds. And that's how the soap, that's how the colors spread apart because of the soap. Um, uh, additionally, uh, you, there's, there's ways to learn coding online. There's a lot of free like coding block learning and uh, you can do that. There's introductions to certain type of languages like CSS, Python, HTML. I mean, you know, we grew up in the MySpace era, so we know HTML. Like we were self-taught HTML. You know, I used to go in there and butcher my entire MySpace page, but there's so many things for students to learn and online learning and ed tech is just so big. So uh, Googling what your interests are and uh, is a great way to start. That's awesome. Garrett, what are some of the things that you've seen Kyrie do that are just like sh shock you? Um, the, um, uh... In Washington D.C., the first uh, summer one-day camp that I that I was at, she had it was about you know fifty or sixty kids, and they had one station, and they were building, uh, putting in uh, some type of something, putting something in a cup, and it was just growing big, big, like like really big. You had to shake it up and do this, stir it, stir it, <laughs> stir it, stir it enough, and then oh, you stir it. 
And then you had a, uh, it just started to grow. The more you stir it, it started to grow and then you just let it grow. And it just grew. And some kids, you know, if they did it perfectly right, then theirs was the tallest. If they didn't do it as well, then, you know, if they tried to take the stick out before, then it would grow a different way. Mm-hmm. But they, those type of things, you know, I, I was decent at science, but it wasn't my passion like it is hers. But to see her um, so interested in something and, and, and to see her eyes light up when she showed, when, when she has kids, interested in it as well and they get to see that it was uh it was really good so i'm, I'm excited for it. yeah tell me about those kids faces when they see this I just... yeah i mean like for example the, so the ones that come to the camp obviously have an interest in science which is the best part uh so it's not about getting them interested but just uh allowing them to be introduced to even more things uh, dealing with science technology math i'm really uh looking forward to the coding and um you know there's going to be a uh a you know a pinpoint on females uh coding for girls um because there's a lack of that you know in, in the industry and I, I think just seeing their faces they're going to be very excited uh willing to learn and you know more times than not people that are in, interested in science have very creative minds so when you have kids that are already creative in general have a great imagination then you you add on to that that they're interested in science you can only imagine the sky's the limit with what they can think and what they can come up with. So the, the, the faces of the kids light up. Um, and I mean, the, another thing that she had at the one day science camp in DC was robotics. And I, I was, my face was lighting up. It was just like little robots that were made and they were able to do different things based on what you, I, I, it's hard to explain for me again, I'm, I'm, I'm a novice at this, but it was something that really made my, uh, my life, my, my face light up. So you can imagine what a, what 11 or 12 year old look like that that's actually really interested in that type of stuff. Absolutely. Um, so talk to us about the uh, short term goal, goals and, and some possible long term goals of, of this uh, program. So like you said, um, short term is just uh, having our first coding camp in Baton Rouge. Now that I'm officially a Baton Rougean, I want to make I want to make this place officially even more home by putting my program into the community. Uh, long-term goals would be to expand. We're ex- looking to just kind of do like one, like one additional camp every two years. Um, I want to just really like learn how to run everything lean. Um, I've been doing that through experience and I realized I want to make sure I'm honing in perfectly on our first experience so that I can make the next experiences even more ex- um, accessible and uh entertaining for the children because you want it to be fun you don't want yeah. it to just be like strictly learning you know yeah. like learning has to be inviting and that's the entire idea of the, the program at the yeah. end of the day you know we want more kids and um you know uh, underserved communities to get involved in this tech uh we know where the world is going we know where america is going and um if we have more people more black and brown kids that are involved in tech <laughs> more women that are involved in tech, more minorities that are involved in science and technology, um, the the better off, the more opportunities they're gonna have to, in my opinion, create generational wealth. So the big picture thing is is, is more something like that. Yeah, that is the long-term goal, right? To to provide different faces in in different places and and be able to have opportunity, right? So it's not just the knowledge that you guys are giving it, it's the hope, right? It's the the path, so I, you know, very, very commendable. And, and, um, you know, I, what are some things that, that, um, people can do, uh, to get involved with, uh, so to get involved in particular with our company, with, uh, the nonprofit, uh, I do have a website, it's sc4k.org. So we do have a contact link up there. If you are interested in finding out ways to either looking to just, you know, just converse with me, I'm, I'm I definitely respect respond through that. Um, we also have an Instagram. I will admit I suck at Instagram, so I'm going to have to get some help in that, but it is science exploration for kids. So uh, those are the best ways to, to, you know, look into getting involved with us. But I mean, there are awesome programs out there as well. So if you're in your area and you want to figure out a way that we can partner, you can definitely send an email through our website at sc4k.org. It's a nonprofit. So yeah. the, again, the whole mission is to get people involved in yeah. science, technology, engineering, arts, math. So the way to get involved is, you know, if, if you can't get in touch or, or can't reach out to us, Google lo- your local STEM. 
uh, areas, uh, your local things that have provide STEM education for kids and, um, you know, put a kid in a STEM class, an enrichment class, you know, during the summer, they're not, yes. instead of having them watch, watch cartoons or just hang out all day, uh, do a little week or two enrichment class in STEM. And I think uh, you'll get to know if they really enjoy it. And if they do, then that's a good path to start them on to, to even more bigger and better things. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, on behalf of uh, JD Finish Line, I would love to um, donate $10,000 to uh, uh, your guys' chapter. And hopefully that can spread this message to those underprivileged, underprivileged communities, the black faces, the brown faces, the women, all the people that have not had the opportunity to have um, something like this. So really appreciate you, you know, kind of spreading it out to those that have not been able to um, experience something um, like that. And just, you know, hearing about the faces, you know, hearing you, your guys' passion, it's just amazing. So it, it's my honor. Yes, thank you. That, thank thank, you, thank so you so much. much. Thank you. And I, you I, yes, thank you. <laughs> and I, thank you. Like you, you need a community and, you, and the community comes in by making sure that we're supported financially. So thank you so much. Um, we're going to make sure uh, that you guys are recognized as well. So thank you. But those funds will go to, a, to, to the right place for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much, Garrett, Kyra. I appreciate it. Hopefully we can talk soon. Um, so good luck with everything. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mike. All Thanks right. Thank you.